I speak to you today as a criminalized and illegalized migrant who is facing deportation back to Morocco. And uh, I want to speak to you today as well and highlight that incarcerated comrades are putting their bodies on the line today through a hunger strike to demand the Maplehurst human cage meets their most basic needs. Why? Why do we have to allow this dehumanization to happen in front of us without collectively doing something meaningful about it? Why do we allow jails, prisons, and other carceral systems to kill our loved ones, to kill community members that if they were outside, like comrades said earlier, would be able to care for them? I want to highlight that jails, prisons, and other carceral systems are not broken. They are designed to control, dispossess, injure, and kill communities and their members based on white supremacist racial lines. And I would like to also urge us, the imprisoned people, that we have to be in solidarity with those behind bar and rise up because enough is enough. As I said, I'm speaking to you as a criminalized and illegalized settler on stolen Algonquin land to bring the point of view of those from our communities who cannot be here because they are forcibly confined, violated, beaten, raped, and killed slowly and quickly in human cages in the name of public safety. Is that really what public safety look like? I speak to you as an abolitionist comrade who does not believe in human cages and other oppressive systems can be reformed. Rather, they must be abolished. And this line of thinking comes directly from the struggles of black peoples before me and right now on Turtle Island and beyond who did not believe that slavery can be reformed but must be abolished. Abolition for us, it is not only an option, it is a historic obligation. It is about which side of history we want to stand on. The same side of history as the fascists, as the apartheid mongers, as the war mongers, was a, 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 with, on the same side of history as people who are striving for justice and justice for all. I speak to you considering my position as a settler in solidarity with indigenous comrades in their struggles for decolonial and decolonial self-determination and who teach us that decolon the decolonial project cannot be a metaphor. Land back means land back. Land back in my context in Morocco means this power structure that are keeping the boot on our neck must cease doing that. I am in solidarity today with migrant workers, workers in general, anti-imperialist organizers, internationalist abolitionists, anti-capitalists, and many more who are striving to create those ju the just world we all want to live in. The Canadian nation state gov governments have been engaging for far too long on enforcing colonial and apartheid system that violate, violate our communities and its members and do not meet our needs. Enough is enough. We are hurt people. And this might seem like a cliche, but hurt people hurt people. Instead of supporting us, the state continuously violates us and furthers the trauma we already suffer from. That is why we are working and striving to abolish the state as a creator and a vehicle of violence. For our communities, the historic declaration to divest from policing and prisons is important because it is not only an indictment of the current systems that keep their boots on our necks, not allowing us to breathe survive and strive, but it is also an urgent call to tell us that we can do better. 
as it outlines straightforward steps and draws a roadmap that if followed meaningfully and effectively can ensure that we transition, transition justly from injustice systems towards abolitionist futures when we can relate to each other in transformative ways, mutually supporting each other instead of punishing and breaking each other. The declaration is particularly important to me and my communities and the communities I work in solidarity with, with because we bear the brunt of punishment, apartheid and torture because abolition for us is not an option, but it is a necessity to end the suffering we go through because the state proved time and time again that they are not invested in promoting life. Rather, they are invested in maintaining system of racial and economic and other dominations under the disguise of public safety because it connects our struggles and bolsters the bridges that already exist between us. Abolitionist futures are impossible if unions keep organizing to protect our killers, if the youth in our communities are kidnapped by the child apprehension systems, while we don't even have enough to feed ourselves, while scarcity is created by capitalism, while in fact, abundance is a reality that is kept away from us by these oppressive structures. I just wanna end it by saying that I truly appreciate everyone trying to build with us, trying to be with us, walk with us towards these futures because we cannot do it by ourselves. This is a collective project and more people must be involved in it. Please look at the declaration and see ways that you can support.